Hello, this is the Silver Watchman, and welcome back to the Bible. Now, we're going to be picking up where we left off last time, which is 1 Kings chapter 11, verse number 40. Let us begin. Solomon therefore sought to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt to Shishak, king of Egypt, who was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of, of the acts of Solomon? And the period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in this place. First Kings chapter 12 Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him a king. So it happened when Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard it he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from, from the presence of, of King Solomon, and had been dwelling in Egypt. That they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made your yoke made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdens some service of your father. And his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. So he said to them, Depart for three days and come back to me. And the people departed. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father, Solomon, while he still lived. And he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you will if you will be a servant to these people today, and serve them, and answer them, and speak God good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you should speak to these people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you should say to them, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke my father chast chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made our yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So the king did not listen to the people, but the turn of events was from the Lord, that he might fulfill his word which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah, the Shilonet, Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king would not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What sure have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now, see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents.
that Rehoboam reigned over all and over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. And the king Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was in charge of the revenue. But all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore the king Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Now it came to pass in all Israel, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had come back, they sent for him and called him to the congregation and made him king of all Israel. There was none who followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, that he might restore the kingdom of Re to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, but this thing is for me, is from me. Therefore they obeyed the word of the Lord, and turned back, according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the mountains of Ephraim and dwelt there. He also went out there and built Pen Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom of David may return to the house of David. Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, then the heart of, the, of this people will turn back to the Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Therefore the king asked advice and made two, made two calves of gold and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Hear your God, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. He set one up in Bethel, and the other he put up in Dan. He put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin for the people who went to worship before the one as far as Dan. He made shrines on high places and made priests from every class of people. Or not of the Levi, not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam ordained a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighteenth month, like the feast that was in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. So he had made, so he had did at Bethel, sacrificing the calves that he had made. And at Bethel, he installed the priests of the high places which he had made. So he made offerings on the altar which he had made on Bethel, at Bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighteenth of the eighth month, and the month which he had devised in his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and offered sacrifices on the altar, and burned incense. 1 Kings chapter 13 And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold a child, Josiah, by the name shall be born to the house of David. 
and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incenses who burn incense on you and men's bones shall be burned on you and he gave a sign the name of the the same day saying this is a sign which the lord has spoken surely the altar shall split apart and the ashes on it shall be poured out so it came to pass when king jeroboam heard the the saying of the man of god who cried out against the altar in bethel and that he stretched out his hand from the altar saying arrest him and his hand which he stretched out toward him withered so that he could not pull it back to himself the altar was also the altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of god had given by the word of the lord then the king answered and said to the man of god please entreat the favor of the lord your god and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me so the man of god entreated to the lord entreated the lord and the king's hand was restored to him and became as before Then the king said to the man of God, "Come home with me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward." But the man of God said to the king, "If you were not to give me half your house, if you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I, would I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me." By the word of the Lord saying you shall not eat bread nor drink water nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to, to them, "Which way did he go?" For his sons had seen which way the man of God went, who came from Judah. Then he said to his sons, "Saddle the donkey for me." So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it. And they went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak tree. sitting under an oak then he said to them are you the man of god who came from judah and he said i am and he said to him come and eat, come with come home with me and eat bread and he said i cannot return with you nor go with you neither can i eat bread nor drink water with you in this place for i have been told by the word of the lord You shall not eat bread nor drink water there nor return by going the way you came he said to him i too am a prophet as you are an angel spoke to me by the word of the lord saying bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water he was lying to him so he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank the wa- and drank water now it happened as they sat at the table that the word of the lord came to the prophet who had brought him back and he cried out to the man of god who came from judah saying thus says the lord because you have disobeyed the word of the lord and have not kept the commandment which the lord your god commanded you But you came back, ate bread and drank water in the place of the Lord, in which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he sent the donkey for him. The prophet whom he had brought back, when he had gone, a lion met with him on a road and killed him. and his corpse was thrown on the road and a donkey stood by it and the lion also stood by the corpse
And there the man, pa man passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road, and a lion standing by the corpse. Then they went and told it in the city where they told it where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of God who is disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord delivered him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to him. When he spoke to his sons, saying, Saddle the donkey for me, so they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road, and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion had not eaten the corpse, nor torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back to the old brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. So it was, after he had buried him, that he spoke to his sons, saying, When I am dead, bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones behind his bones. For the saying which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the shrines of the, on the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, will surely come to pass. After this event, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but again he made priests from every class of people for the high places. Whoever wished, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests in high places. And this thing was a sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. First Kings chapter 14. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick, and Jeroboam came to his wife. He said to his wife, Please arise and disguise yourself, that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam. And go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah, the prophet, is there. Who has told who told me that I will be king over this place, over this people. Also take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him, and he will tell you what will become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and she arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. Now the Lord said to Ahijah, Here is the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus he shall say to her, For it will be, when she comes in, that she will pretend to be another woman. So it was when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door. He said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another person? For I have been sent to you with bad news. Go tell Jeroboam. Thus says the word, so just, thus says the Lord God of Israel. Because I exalted you from among the people and made you ruler over my people, Israel, and tore a kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, that you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart, to, only, to do only what was right in my eyes, but you have done more evil than all who were before you. For you have gone and made you for yourselves other gods and molded images to provoke me to anger. 
and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam every male in Israel. Bond and free, I will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as one takes away refuse until it is all gone. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Jeroboam and dies in a city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in a field. For the Lord has spoken. Arise, therefore, go to your own house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die, and all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he is the only one of Jeroboam who shall come to the grave, because in him there was found something good towards the Lord God of Israel and the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam. This is the day. What, even now? For the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land which he gave to their fathers and scatter them beyond the river because they have made their wooden images provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam who sinned and who made Israel sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Terzah. When she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And they buried him, and all Israel mourned him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through his servant Ahijah, the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war, and how he reigned, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. The period that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years, so he reigned with his fathers. Then Nadab, his son, reigned in his place. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah, and Rehoboam was forty years old was forty-one years old when he became king. And he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. Now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed more than their fathers had done. But they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and wooden images on every high hill, under every green tree. And there was also perverted persons in the land, and it did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. It happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. Whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them and brought them into the brought them back into the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, they are, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And there was a war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So Rehoboam rested with his fathers and was buried in, with his fathers in the city of David. His, mother na- his mother's name was Namah, 
an Ammonite is. Then Abijam, the son who reigned in his place. First Kings, chapter 15. Then the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabat Abijah, became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makkah, the granddaughter of Abisham. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before his in his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, and was the heart of his father, as was the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and establishing Jerusalem. Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam so Abijam rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, reigned in his place. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king over Judah, and he reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. And his grandmother's name was Makkah, the granddaughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the, eye, in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. And he banished the perverted persons of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. He also removed Makkah, his grandmother, from being queen mother, because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. And Asa cut down her obscene image and burned it by the brook of by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all his days. He also brought into the house of the Lord the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which he had made himself, which he, which he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. And Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let Dan go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that was left in the treasury, in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. and the treasuries of the king's house, and delivered them into the hands of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the king of Tebrim, Tebraman, the son of Hezion, the king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as it was between my father and your father. See, I have gold. Come and break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel. So that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded the king, heeded the king Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. He attacked Ijon, Dan, Abel, Beth, Makkah, and all Chinaroth, with all the land of Naphtali. Now it happened when Basha heard it, 
that he stopped building Ramah and remained in Terza. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah. None was exempted, and they took away the stones in the chamber Ramah, which Basa used for building. With them, King Asa built Giba of Benjamin and Mizpah. The rest of all the the rest of of all the acts of Asa, all this might that he did in the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Judah? But in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. So Asa rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place. Nadadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over all, king over Israel, in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and did sins by which he had made Israel sin. Then Basha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar conspired against him, and Basha killed him. And Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, well, Nadab and all Israel laid siege at Gibbethon. Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And it was so, when he became king, that he killed all the house of Jeroboam, and, that, and did not, he did not leave to Jeroboam anyone that breathed, until he had destroyed him according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. My servant Ahijah, the Shilonite, because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he had sinned, by which he had made Israel sin, because of his provocation, with which he had provoked the Lord, God of Israel, to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Basha, the son of Ahijah, became king of all Israel in Terzah, he reigned twenty-four years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin, by which he made Israel sin. First Kings, chapter 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Anani, against Basha, saying, And as much as I lifted you out of the dust and made you rule over my people Israel, you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have made my people Israel sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. Surely I will take away the posterity of Basha, and the posterity of his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Basha, and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the fields. Now the rest of the acts of Basha, what he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Basha rested with his fathers, and was buried in Terza. Then Elah, his son, reigned in his place. And also the word of the Lord came by the prophet against Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Basha and his house, because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, and provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, and being like the house of Jeroboam, because he killed them. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, Elah, 
the son of Basha, became king over Israel and reigned two years in Terzah. Now his servant Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Terzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Terzah. Zimri went in and struck him and killed him in the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in this place. And it came to pass when he began to reign as soon as he was seated on the throne, that he killed all the household of Basa, Basha. He did not leave him one male, neither of his relatives nor of his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the household of Basha, according to the word of the Lord, which he had, which he spoke against Basha, by Jehu the prophet. For all the sins of Basha, and the sins of Eli's son, by which they had sinned, and by which they had made Israel sin, and provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Eli, and all that he did, but they are not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri had reigned in Terzah seven days, and the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. Now the people who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and also has killed the king. So all Israel made Amri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. Then Amri and all Israel with him went up from Gibbethon, and they besieged Terzah. And it happened when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went to the citadel of the king's house, and burned the king's house down upon himself with fire, and died. Because of the sins which he had committed in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in the sin which he had committed made to make Israel sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the treason he committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided, divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Ganath, to make him king, and half followed Amri. But the people who followed Amri prevailed over the people who followed Tibni, the son of Ganath. So Tibni died, and Amri reigned. And in the thirty-first year of Asa, king of Judah, Amri became king over Israel, and reigned twelve years. Six years he reigned in Terzah, and he bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver. Then he built on the hill, and called them, and called the name of the city which he built Sumeria, after the name of Shemur, the owner of, owner of the hill. Amri did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did worse than all who were before him. For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and in the sin which he had made Israel sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Amri rested with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria. Then Ahab his son reigned in his place. And in the thirty-eighth year of Asa king of Judah, Ahab the son of Amri became king over Israel. And Ahab the son of Amri reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty-two years. Now Ahab the son of Amri did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him, and it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, that he took as a wife Jezebel the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians. And he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hale of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation with Abiram, his firstborn, 
with his youngest son, Segub, which is his. He set up its gates according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. 1 Kings chapter 17 And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, the form whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then of then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward, and hide from the brook Cherith, which follows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So we went and did according to the word of the Lord. For we went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then a word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zerophath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there, gathering six. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup, that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elisha said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make, but make me a small cake from it first, and bring it to me. And afterwards, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run, out, run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and the sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring, him, to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper rooms where he was staying, and laid him on his own bed. And he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on, on the widow whom I lodge by killing her son? Her son? Then he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper rooms of the into the house, and gave him to his, to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. First Kings chapter 18 And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab called, had called Obadiah, who was in charge of his house, 
Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For so it was, while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah had taken one hundred prophets and hidden them, fifty to a, to a cave, and had fled with them with bread and water. And Ahab said to Obadiah, Go into the land, to all the springs of water, and to all the brooks, perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so that we will not have to kill any livestock. So they divided the land between them to explore it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Now Obadiah was on his way. Suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him, and he fell on his face and said, Is that you, my lord Elijah? And he answered him, It is I. Go, tell your master, Elijah is here. So he said, How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent to someone to hunt for you. When they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. So when I go and tell Ahab that he cannot, and he cannot find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Was it not reported to my Lord what, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, and how I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here, he will kill me. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it happened, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have. In that, you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and I, and I followed the balls. Now therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal, and the four hundred prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls. Let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood. Put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bull. Lay it on wood. Put no fire but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And a God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, 
Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So they took the bull which was, which was given them, and they prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves, as was their custom, with knives and lances, until the blood gushed out on them. And when midday was past, they prophesied unto the the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, but there was no voice. Not one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elisha said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then the stones he, then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two sayas of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. So they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, and they also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things in your word, at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in a trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and executed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went, went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face in his, between his knees and he said to his servant go up now look toward the sea so he went up and looked and said there is nothing and seven times he said go again then it came to pass at the seventh time that he said there was a cloud as a small man's hand as a small man's hand rising out of the sea So he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain, so Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. 1 Kings, chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. 
also how he had executed the pro all the prophets of, with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as a life as one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he rose and ran for his life, and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die, and said, It is enough now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because of the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb in the mountain of God. that there went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out, and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind torn into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Stood in the entrance of, of the cave, suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because your children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah. He shall anoint his prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escaped the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left his oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, 
Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then they arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. First Kings chapter 20. Now Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his forces together. Thirty-two kings were with him, with horses and chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and made war against it. Then he sent messengers into the city of Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, Thus says Ben-Hadad, Your silver and your gold are mine, your loveliest, your loveliest wives and children are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, just as you say, I and all that I have are yours. Then the messengers came back and said, Thus speaks Ben-Hadad, saying, Indeed, I have sent to you, saying, You shall deliver to me your silver and your gold, your wives and your children. But I will send my servants to you tomorrow, about this time, and they shall search your house and the houses of your servants, and it shall be that whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put in their hands and take it. So the kings of Israel, so the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Notice, please, see how this man seeks trouble? For he sent to me, for my wives, my children, my silver, and my gold, and I did not deny him. And all the elders and all the people said to him, Do not listen or consent. Therefore he said to the messenger of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord, the king, All that you sent for to your servant the first time I will do, but this thing I cannot do. And the messengers departed and brought the word back to him, and brought back word to him. Then Ben-Hadad sent to him, and said, The gods do so to me, and more also, if enough dust is left of Samaria for a handful of each of the people who follow me. So the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him, Let not one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. And it happened, when Ben-Hadad heard this message as he and the kings were drinking at the command post, that he and his servants, that he said to his servants, get ready, and they got ready to attack the city. That appears to be all the time I have for this episode of the Bible. Thank you for sitting through, sitting with me. Glory be to God, and blessings be upon you. I apologize, but I'm a bit out of breath. This is truly an honor. Thank you for following the series so far, and if you have been, even more so blessings on you. This is an honor, and I truly do enjoy this. May you continue to follow the series as it continues to unfold, because this is getting awesome. Thank you. Glory be to God. Blessings be upon you. And this is Silver Watchman, signing out.